when Jesus was walking with the disciples before he was crucified, you find in, in Matthew 24, if you open your Bibles there, verse 3, Matthew 24, 3, the Scripture says, He said, Now as He said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to Him privately saying, Tell us. Tell, tell us. Because he just, he just, I mean, He thrashed the religious crowd, the Pharisees and the scribes. And, you know, if you'll read chapter 23. I mean, he just flat shut them down. And, and they're just all blown away, the disciples. And so they go to the Mount of Olives, and, and they say, Tell us, when will these things be? Tell us. Tell us. And what will be the sign of your coming? See? What, what, what will be the sign of you... You're, you're, you're coming. You're coming again. Because he's telling them all this stuff. And, and, you know, they don't have it all pieced together yet. But yet now they're, some things are coming together. And, and they say, and the end of the age, this dispensation of time, that's what an age is. An age is a dispensation of time. And so, when, when shall you come again? And when will this age stop? And that new age, that one about that, um, that when, when the Lord comes back to set up His kingdom, I mean literally, not figuratively, not spiritually, but literally set up His kingdom upon the earth. That thousand-year reign, that's why it's called a millennial, you know, a thousand, one thousand, millennium. The thousand-year millennium, that millennial reign of Christ. When's, when's all that? Tell us. And look what he says. He says, uh, Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. Now, you know why he said that? Because the devil's going to see to it that plenty of people are going to try to deceive us. Going to try to discourage us. Try to cloud it. Try to deny it. Try to spiritualize it. Try to allegorize it. Instead of taking it for what it is. Jesus came literally the first time. And he's coming literally the second time. And he says here, he says... Now, take heed that no one deceives you. Get your eyes open. Look around. Stay in the Word. Stay in, commune with the Father in prayer. You know, you know what we got to do. Come together and fellowship and encourage one another and help one another. Bless one another. Love one another. Do, do, because the enemy is going to try to deceive the people of God. And he says this. He says, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. Listen, all you got to do is Google people today who claim to be Christ. And the list is longer than your leg. It's always been. It's always been. And he says, for many will come in my, and will deceive many. There'll be, there'll be plenty of people follow after him, you know. Remember Jim Jones way back in, what was that, 78 or 9, somewhere back yonder, 78? He, he was Christ. That's what he said. You see? I mean, that's just, it, it just time and time again. Remember Waco, Texas? Uh, David Koresh or something like that. that. wasn't his real name, but that's what he proclaimed to be. He says, he says and you will hear of wars... And rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. The end of the age. The end of this age. This age. He says, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in, in various places. There will be earthquakes where, where you're accustomed to it, and there will be earthquakes 
that will surprise you. Like Mineral, Virginia. I think that's where they said the epicenter was. All these things, all these things that he just, they're the beginning of sorrows. And it has the idea of when a, when a woman, preg, a pregnant woman starts in to labor. The beginning, the birth pangs, the beginning of these things. And he says, he says, then they'll deliver you up to tribulation, kill you. You'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up. They'll deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Mercy me. Mercy me. Let's go, let's go through this list. He, he's given us ten things here. Oh, the, uh, I forgot to read uh, verse 14. It said, the gospel will be proclaimed in all the world. You know what 14 says? Yeah. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Now, so here are signs that Jesus said will be very prevalent and increase in intensity as it comes time for His return. Now, you know, I'm not going to argue about the rapture. All right? Some people don't even believe in the rapture. God bless their hearts. They don't even know about the rapture. Don't understand it. It doesn't matter if you're pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. We're not talking about that. We're talking about when the Lord comes back to the earth with the church. Of course, I think he has to come and get us before we can come back with him, but we'll move on. So here the Lord tells us 10 things that will be signs, you know, mile markers, you know, what, what X are we looking for? 113. What mile marker are we? 101. Well, we got 12 more to go. You see? He's saying, here are signs for you. It, you who are spiritual, you who are concerned, you who are awake, you who are serving, I'm going to serve this up. And give you a heads up. Now, he's not going to tell us a day. He's not going to tell us the hour. He's not going to, nothing like that. But he's given us these things. The disciples said, tell us. Tell us. You won't tell the, the, the religious crowd, you know, the, the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the, the legalist. You won't tell them. But tell us. And he did tell us. He did. First thing right here. First, first sign in verse 5. Many will come in my name, deceive many. The, the first sign is an increase in deception. Deception will abound and increase. And, if you, and, and, and they'll say, I'm the Christ. Now, listen. To say you're the Christ is to say much more than anybody can fulfill. But when you start at attacking Jesus Christ, the person of Christ, and, and, and saying you are equal to Him, but you know, we shouldn't be surprised because in all my lifetime, society has been humanizing Jesus and deifying man. My whole lifetime that's been going on. It just gets worse and worse and worse. And so when people, when people say, I'm, I'm like Christ or I am Christ, it's not a far fetch and a far jump to start undermining the authenticity and the inerrancy and the, 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 the inspiration of Holy Scripture. And we see that happening all the time. We're, we're seeing those things come about. 
Deception, deception, deception. We see where, where, where now those, there are many who say they're Christian are mixing things that are unchristian. And those things won't mix. You know, water and oil don't go together. Just doesn't go together. And so for, for the child of God, we need to be awake. And those that we know and our friends and our loved ones, we need to, we need to awaken them to say, open your eyes and see what's going on. There's only one Christ. His name's Jesus. He's the virgin-born, sinless Son of God. And he's, he's coming again. And that fellow over there, or that gal over yonder, or that person over there, they're not Christ. And those who say, well, it doesn't matter what the Bible says, it's all right to do this, and it's not all right to do that, and, 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 you, know, and you shouldn't. I mean, you, uh, Paul said that it'll get to the point where people say, uh, you'll just have, you can't eat meat. Then they'll say you can't marry. And, and you know what that, that has the idea of? You, you can't marry. It also has the idea of you don't have to marry. Just live together. Well, hasn't that increased in our lifetime? Hasn't it? It's abounded and abounded. Deception. Deception is abounding. It's increasing. Jesus said, that's one of the first road signs. You're getting close to the exit. You're getting close. Look here at verse 6 and 7. He says, you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. He says, for nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There'll be, uh, so there'll be dissension. Boy, is there dissension today? It's amazing to me that, that I mean, now this is how crazy our world's getting. Uh, I, and there's no politics in this. This is just how crazy the world's getting. We are, as a nation, entertaining the fact that we're going to arm a group of fighters, uh, a group of Muslims, in Syria to fight these meaner, nastier bunch that split off of them and to help us whip them when the people we're going to arm are the people who flew airplanes into our buildings in New York City in the Pentagon. How crazy is the world going to become? Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, there's no, there's no dissension. Craziness. People are just getting closer to the exit. We're getting closer to the exit where we we're going to get off this road, this road of life. You know? Two blood moons down, two to go. What's going to happen? I don't know. All I know is I don't know what the stock market did today. I know yesterday it dropped 270-some points. What did it do today? Dropped again? Joy, joy. <laughs> I mean, do you... And then look here. And we don't hear a lot about this because we, we, we're, we're not going hungry. Famines. You see, devastation. Do you realize that Africa has been locked in such a famine for so long that there's been tens, hundreds of thousands of people starved to death over the last few years in Africa? We don't hear nothing about it. You know, that doesn't make news here. I mean, you understand? And famine's increasing and increasing and increasing. And, and all these things, we're getting closer to the exit. It's going to increase. You know, it'll get our attention when we, there's no bread for us to buy at Martin's or, or Walmart or wherever it is you buy it. Do you, you understand? And then, then he says, he says right here, what's the next one? Pestilence. You know what that is? Ebola, HIV, AIDS. Uh, what's this new, this one that's killing the, the little asthmatic kids? Yeah, Intera, something or other, or other, something. I mean, increasing, uh, and where do they get these things? 
And the, and the fellow who brought it, the first case that happened in, a, in Texas, that man died, I heard today. We're getting closer to the exit. Now you say, oh, this is depressing. No, it's exciting for me. It's showing me that, that I, listen, what time I got left, I need to speak up for Jesus. I need to be in the house of God. I need to be with the people of God. I need to be praying. I need to be worshiping. I need to be reading my Bible. I need to, I need this to be obedient to the leadership of the Spirit of God and do what He says, knowing that He'll never tell me to do anything contrary to that book. That's what, that's what. I'm excited. That's why we need revival. My God, we need to fall to our knees and crawl out to God. We need you. We, we've, listen, if America doesn't turn and repent of her national sins, you'll live to see her fall. Mark my words. Our sin is great. Ten times worse than Nazi Germany. My God in heaven, and now 30 states, men can marry men and women can marry. Where, my God, we're going insane. Help us, oh Lord. Help us. We can't help ourselves. Let's get to the point where we realize how hopeless it is. Our human effort won't make that difference, but He can. He can if He can. If he'll just come down in power, if he'll come down and change our hearts, he can. He, I, I'm convinced he wants to. Because you know people, and I know people, who I, you love them, they're, they're nice, they're good as far as people go. But they're going to die and go to hell if they don't come to Jesus and get saved. I don't care whose relative they are, whose child, son, or daughter they are. I don't care whose husband or wife they are. If they don't come to Christ, they're not going to heaven. And I'm telling you, when you come to Christ, there will be a change in your heart. It will be a change in your attitude. It will be a change in your walk. I mean, it's amazing how many Christian atheists we have in the church houses today. Christian atheists, uh, well, it's like this. They're atheists when it comes to sex. Yeah. When, when God made sex to be between a man and a woman in holy matrimony, and it'd be so special and so intimate that it used to be it used to embarrass us if it was even mentioned in mixed company. And we've been so saturated. By media, by TV and movies and, and, and songs and, and all this. that we, we don't even know how to blush anymore. Nothing embarrasses us. Another sign. We're getting close to the exit. Oh, God, help me. Help, help you. Help me and help you. Help us. Oh, God, we need you. Because we're, we are still human and we're prone to just absolutely do the wrong thing. Look what else he says. Not only, not only disease, but look here, verse 7, he says earthquakes, disasters, disasters, earthquakes, tsunamis, tornadoes, all these things, all these things. I mean... Have you ever seen, so, uh, over the last 10 years, have you ever seen so many wildfires in all your life? I don't ever remember hearing telling all that back when I was younger, you know? I never heard Walter Cronkite tell me that 20,000 acres in California had gone up in flame. I mean, just another sign that we're getting closer to the off-ramp, or shall I say, the up ramp. <laughs> and then look what else he says. In verse 9 he says, Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. See, now here's a statistic that most Christians don't realize. There's been more, more Christians killed 
in the last hundred years than all the other time since Christ combined. More persecution of Christians, more martyrdom of Christians, more killings, more burnings, more beheadings, more starvation deaths, more brutal and, 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 and then you compound the rape and the selling into slavery. It has increased in our lifetime exponentially. But you won't hear that on CNN either or, or, or whatever one. That, that doesn't make news, you see. Doesn't make news. It just doesn't make news. But if you point out, if you point out that everybody who's trying to destroy our way of life and take our freedoms happens to be of one faith group, you're bad. I'm not saying all Muslims are like ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Iran and, and all them other stuff, you know. But it's amazing to me all of them on those planes were Muslim. All of them that have cut the heads off of the, those last four Christians, those, those two Americans and those two Brits, Brit, British folk, were Muslim. It's amazing to me. God help us. We've got to stand for Jesus. we got to tell the truth. I had a man call me today. I was his pastor years ago. Called me today. And he called me. He called me. I says, Pastor Bob. <laughs> I've not been his pastor in years. And he, and he said to me, he told me the situation. And, and I said, uh, He asked me about two different issues, and I and I spoke to him from the Bible, and one of them was homosexual marriage. He says it's unbelievable the pressure. And the people that 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 think if you speak out against it, you're sinning. Can I submit to you that? God loves every person who is dabbling or addicted to that pervasive, that perverted lifestyle. And it is. It's an abomination. He loves every person, every man and every woman who's ever dabbled, dabbled in that stuff. He loves them. He loves them as much as he loves you and me. But the th problem is you and I don't love them if we, by silence... Or making excuses for their sin, endorse that lifestyle. Let's love them enough to, to point them to Jesus and tell them that God can set you free. Now, the world is telling us you can't do that. That's politically incorrect. Well, who gives a hoot and a holler anyway? Are you here? Who, who are we here to please? I think we're here to please Jesus, don't you? Don't you think? And so, here we are. Death, deception, dissension, devastation, disease, disaster, and death. You'll be hated for Jesus' sake, for His name's sake. You will, if you stand for Jesus, it is absolutely guaranteed that you will be hated. You won't be liked everywhere you go. You will be maligned and gossiped about, lied about. Maybe even the truth told on us. <laughs> Don't be surprised. That's just another sign to the up ramp. Just another, just another sign. And then he says right here, in verse 10, he says... And then many will be offended, betray one another, will hate one another. I get calls almost weekly from pastors who, who uh, and every pastor, every church, sooner or later, will go through this. Dissension. 
dissension. And, and he says, I can't believe this was said about me. I said, well, believe it. Believe it. Believe it. You know what they said about Jesus, don't you? That he was an illegitimate son of a German mercenary in the Roman army. Now, if they're going to call into question his legitimacy, don't be shocked if they say that you got ugly feet <laughs> or anything a lot worse. Don't, it's just another road sign. And you and I need to be awake to that. We need to be awake to all these things and not be caught on the wrong side of that of that line. Because, it, uh, listen, you're made out of the same stuff. We're all made out of the same stuff. And it's, it's, it's so easy, so easy, so easy, because it's so natural to do the wrong thing. And then, disloyalty. Betray one another. Hate one another. And then look at verse 11. He says, and many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And I'm telling you, there's more false prophets today than there ever been. Delusion. Delusion. People telling people, listen, I, I would be very slow to say, quit your job. But I, I know, I know of it happening. Quit your job. Sell out. Listen. God wants you to quit your job, don't you think he'll tell you? He might confirm it through a, a real prophet, but it won't be a shocker to you. You say, I think God will give you an idea of what you're supposed to do. I believe he will. I believe. Why? Because he loves us that much. He loves us that much. He loves us that much. The Lord came to Moses in the burning bush. <laughs> he says, this is what we're going to do. And then Jethro comes along, his father-in-law, and encourages. And he was, a, he was a prophet of God. And spoke to him and encouraged him. You see, he needed, God told him, but then somebody he could grab a hold of encouraged him in the things of God. See how it works? I believe, I believe it works that way myself. So, disloyalty, dis delusion. Look at verse 12. He says, And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. You see, defection. They'll turn away from the Lord and they'll turn away from each other. Walk away from one another. God help us. God, help us to stay true. God, help us to stick with it. You see, that's one of the signs that you're, you're really real. Stick with it. But when we see people, you know, becoming, and, there, and lawlessness is abounding, you know? I mean, it's amazing how... How people can be dishonest and, and how, how, how they can do things and twist things and, and bend things. And yeah, we can, we're all capable. We're, we're, we're probably we've all been guilty. But it's going to increase and increase and increase. You see, that's why we need closeness and love and unity. That's why we need, you see, because we're going to need each other more and more. Now's not the time to become a lone ranger or a, a spiritual hobo, just drift, a drifter, just drifting along. Listen, we're going to need it. At, at, the closer we get to the Lord coming, we're going to need each other more and more because these things are going to increase in intensity. They're going to. They're absolutely going to. And then look at verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. Now, I've been hearing for 30 years, well, help us. You know, and, and a, lot of, a lot of TV ministries and radio ministries, you know, help us so we can get the gospel out around the world. Well, guess what? 
Guess what? I can go anywhere on earth with a shortwave radio, and guess what I can hear? I can hear the gospel. I can go, I can go to the densest jungle. I can go up the widest river. I can go anywhere in Asia, in Africa, in Europe, in South America, in the islands of the sea, Australia, New Zealand. doesn't matter. You can even go to Antarctica and turn on and get the gospel. Wow. All these signs are showing up. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you Jesus is coming tomorrow or next week or next month or next year, or, or in 20 years, or in 50 years. I'm not going to do that. I have no right to do that. The Bible doesn't tell me I can do that. But I can tell you this. He's given us signs. He's given us signs. Just like <laughs> coming come north, exit 300. Well, I don't want to go to D.C., 302, there's Middletown, or, yeah, yeah, Mid Middletown, you know, and then you zoom on up, 307, there's Stephen City, and 310, there's that Tasker Road, Route 37, Here we'll get, 313, there's, there's 50, right, 313, and then 315's Route 7 in it, and then 317's let route 11. And then there was others. There was two, two, or two more, I think. I, don't, I, I can never remember their numbers. I just know we're to almost heaven when we're going there. You know. And then you see the sign. Welcome to wild, wonderful West Virginia. The signs are coming. And they're going faster and faster. They're getting more prominent. They're getting more enlarged. And... You know, I'd never heard of 4 4. I never, you know, NASA now can, because of all their stuff, they can back the clock up and they can tell when there were full blood moons. They can run it backwards mathematically and they can tell. Guess what happened in 1492? Yeah, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, but you ask a Jew what happened in 1492. Queen Isabella forced all Jews in Spain to either convert to Catholicism or leave the country. That's why there are Jews, there are Jews in other places in the world that still speak Spanish after all those years. After 600 years of being forced out of Spain. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? I think it's amazing. I'm telling you, and uh, there's, a, there's a list this long, and I'm not going to tell them to you. I'm telling you these things, asking the Lord to light a fire under us, that we will be more ardent, more zealous, more joyful, that we have the privilege of representing Jesus and taking the message of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. That's a privilege. That's a privilege. You don't have to be a preacher to do it. <laughs> he just wants us to oh, just, just show him Jesus. Just show them Jesus. Don't worry about what you're going to say. Lord, Lord, give you a word. Say, Lord, I want to, want to be a witness. I want to be a help. Help me, Lord, to encourage someone. Help me, Lord, to, to be a blessing to someone. And He will, because these signs are getting bigger and faster. Bigger and faster. The world. Now, I didn't live through World War II, okay? But in my lifetime, in my lifetime, historically speaking, and I lived through the Cold War. I remember 
hunkering down and getting under the desk at, in grade school. You know, I, I remember that stuff. Today is the most volatile, dangerous time in the world right now. What we do, let's do quickly. Let's do joyfully. Let's do with excitement and zeal. How many people can I get to come to the Lord's house this Sunday, Sunday morning or Sunday night? How, what can I do? What kind of difference can I make? How many phone calls can I make? How, how many times can I open my mouth? How many emails can I send? How many text messages can I send? How many Facebook messages? You know, there's so many blooming ways to contact people. Well, I mean, my goodness, we all could probably have a hold of 500 before we knew it if we do it. And all of them is not going to show up. But the ones who do, some of those will be confronted with the gospel. And some of those, I mean, all of them will be confronted with the gospel. But some of those will say yes to Jesus. That'd be a good thing, wouldn't it? I don't know about you, but I, I think that'd excite me. Wouldn't it? To see people get saved. You see, you know it's, we're in a bleak, cold spiritually dark time people don't even rejoice when lost people get saved anymore god help us restore the joy of your salvation to your people O oh lord amen let's stand